Hey, Cougar family. Welcome to season one of the Cougs First podcast, your one-stop business network, a podcast all about life, business, and the best college in the world, Washington State University. Join us each episode to hear stories from your favorite Cougs, interviewed by yours truly, Kelsey Knudsen, class of 2012. We're so glad you're here, and we can't wait to dive into this week's conversation. So grab a cup of coffee, crack open that beer, or pour a glass of wine, and let's kick off another episode of the Cougs First Podcast. Hey, fellow Cougs, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Today, I am joined by Jedediah Collins, who you may know for his outstanding football career, but we may also know or not know he's he's an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm sorry, but we're probably going to go there quite a bit. So buckle up. There's going to be a lot to unpack in this episode, and I am so excited to have him here in his wealth of expertise, knowledge, and experience. So Jedediah Jed, could you kick it off by, for the for those who have not done a quick Google search, could you explain how you ended up at WSU and what kind of contribution you had in your time there? Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> Summit, uh, anytime you get let in with expert, you, you kind of got to take a second and go, all right, I got to I got to live up to this. Um, those who know me know to lower their expectations. Those who, who are hearing me for the first time, I became a coup because I was I got the opportunity to be a student athlete. Truly um, coming out of Southern California. I was uh, on a very good high school team. My Achilles heel. Uh, has something to do with my literal Achilles heel. I was never very fast. And so although I I got some good looks and opportunities, Washington State told me I'd get to come and be a linebacker. That was my dream, go play middle linebacker for the Cougs. When I came, Will Durding was holding that position and that title. And you just look at it and you go, yeah, I want to follow a legend and learn from him. Turns out they lied. I I was not fast enough to play linebacker, so I quickly transitioned. But that life skill of kind of figuring out how to add value to a team, being able to adopt and adapt to situations um, has really been one of those that has stuck with me throughout my life. So looking at coming to Washington State could not be more polar opposite of a geographic area than Orange County, California. I remember... um, my mom actually, when I committed, took me to a boot barn and we got <laughs> all all the clothing and everything ready for my trip to eastern Washington with, you know, all new cowboy stuff, which ended up being used at, you know, for Halloween that year. And everybody goes, yeah, nobody really wears that around campus anymore. So um, it was kind of a humbling realization. But my time in Pullman, four years could not have enjoyed more. As I mentioned, I was a student athlete, took the student part very seriously. One of my claim to fame is I led the athletic department in tutoring hours uh, for two years uh, because I was an accounting degree and a business major. Um, And so looking at what I wanted to take as I left campus, really emphasizing that business, really understanding the fundamentals in the numbers, And I also met my beautiful bride at Washington State. She is a fellow Coug, um, and she, her name's Kira, formerly known Hollenbeck, now Collins. Uh, She has been with me. We've been married 13 years now. So uh, I guess that worked. And, you know, that's the start of the Coug thinks Cougs first. I don't want to say you think bride, but, (laughs) yeah, you know, it's not a bad idea to start there. Hey, it worked for you. Eliminate, eliminate Cougs. (laughs) When you're looking to get married and then start to expand your horizons. Yeah, totally. There you go. I have, I have a challenging questions you for you, and I don't know if you'll, we're just going to do it. I was like, do I answer, right. ask this question? Do we not? No, we're asking it. The mindset of a student athlete, do most go mm-hmm. in thinking of the long game, thinking of career after, or are most kind of going in focused on that college time and hoping to make it pro? What are most people thinking who are alongside you? I can only speak for the football locker room. I would assume basketball is closer, but, you know, you get to some of the more Olympic sports, the hopes and dreams of becoming a professional, I don't think are as prevalent. I would say of a freshman recruiting class of 20 to 25 guys, 19 of them are young and dumb and egotistical enough to believe they're there to, to, as a stepping stone to go play professional ball. 
I was actually one of the minorities. I looked at it and said, you know, I'm here to get, because it was drilled in me in my home life and in between my mom and dad, I was there to get that free education. And we, we put free in quotations, it definitely earned, put in more hours and, and paid for through blood, sweat and tears. But I started to look at it and say, what is the game of football, my vehicle? What is the game of football going to provide for me? I would talk to endless, countless guys in the locker room about how they were going to go play professional and how they were going to defy these odds. And being an accounting guy, I just realized numbers don't lie. And I, if I was not fast enough to play in college, I was probably not going to be fast enough to play in the NFL. I got humbled to that reality and humbled to the idea that even though you're a big fish in a little pond in high school, you come into that competitive stage and that level and you start to realize everybody's a pretty big fish. Um, so I would hope the mindset of a student athlete starts to evolve to looking at taking from their sport, regardless of what that sport is, not just in opportunities, but also in principles. That's something I get to talk to a lot of student athletes about is looking at what your sport is taught you and how to translate that to a life skill. I really think we overlook and underappreciate some of those fundamental resources that we have. Um, but in today's day and age with this NIL name, image, and likeness opportunity, it has forced the issue to identify yourself as something as more than just a student or an athlete. You are now a brand. You are now a business. You are a automatic entrepreneur. And so while I don't agree with everything happening in the NIL space, I do think it's a really neat conversation that has been forced into the collegiate and now high school levels of identifying yourself as what do I do beyond the ball? What do I do beyond the game? And how do I use what I have going for me to propel me into that? Um, so that that dynamic and that conversation you were forced into when you, quote unquote, retired has been brought, you know, more to fruition in today's day and age. But long-winded answer, short answer is, no, yeah, most guys think they're going pro. <laughs> and they should think bigger. Because even and even if you go they, pro, that's not forever too, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I And this is the, and I was fortunate. I got to play seven years. Unbelievable. Seven years longer than anybody, including me, expected. <laughs> but I look at even the success stories and the guys who made it the, the NFL average of three years. And you start to question, like, what is the dream, really? If mm -hmm. the, the ones who are fortunate enough to be the 1% of the 1% who make it into the NFL, then you get into the 50% that don't make it the three years. What is the dream if those guys aren't even taking the financial opportunity and maximizing it? Um, and so that's really what I am, one of the passions I'm pursuing is we want to continue the dream. I want there to be a success story of some no-name kid who got to go and bang around and play longer than he expected, but captured the opportunity because we need the football rooms to fill up. We need the basketball, the baseball, track. If you look at high school sports from the pandemic, but even a little bit beforehand, they're all taking a little bit of a hit in attendance and popularity. And, and I, again, I'm just a big believer and proponent of what, what sport can teach you. So I, I would hope that we, we start to see what the, the beauty is, not just financial, but also just in life skill. Totally. And I would assume, I mean, I'm sure money comes with that for some people, but a lot of what motivates people and what drives them to play at the collegiate level, but beyond is a deeper drive to have some sort of impact or some stronger why that's directing them. Is that true? Am I making it? <laughs> I've met some individuals who look at their platform as an athlete and how they're going to impact the world and, and share their voice. Those are few and far between. More so, you meet people who are truly just, I like to say, inspired, not motivated necessarily, but inspired by greatness, mm -hmm. chasing the pursuit of either perfection in themselves, perfection in their art. Those are the people I love to be around. You, you know, you, you feel uh, a little bit of empathy for them because you realize that's a life curse. Uh, look at our friend Tom Brady, for example, um, being inspired and chasing greatness 
it has no end. There is no end to greatness. You'll never achieve perfection. And so there's always room to develop and grow. But I have loved seeing the teammates that I've been able to play with and grow with turn around and use the platform to realize they're not just a role model, but they're also have the ability and capability to go and make that bigger picture impact. I, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I would put myself in that category of using my shtick and using my, you know, brand as a football player to open a door to create a, a conversation around something like financial literacy. It is again looking at your game as it's going to take from me. What can I take from it? And if you can spin, um, the idea of athlete into that means somebody's going to listen. It's a great place to to start a conversation and to spread a message. Cougs First is your one-stop business network. Looking for a new bank or insurance? Think Cougs First. Buying a new car? Think Cougs First. Hiring a Coug? Think Cougs First. Need a mentor? You guessed it. Think Cougs first. What makes WSU great is Cougs supporting Cougs, and they are in every business. And we'll take your call. Google it at cougsfirst.org. And as always, go Cougs. Well, and I mean, you opened up the NIL window, so I'm going <laughs> to go there. So it, it, but, not the door, the window's open. Yeah, just a little slight, yeah. a little breeze. Um, but I think that happening is forcing people to think this big picture this way sooner in their career because you do yeah. have impact with social media and stuff. Even if, even before this conversation was officially happening, it was quietly happening with certain athletes just having more attention on them at a younger and younger age. So I think you're right that that awareness around it and that intention with it, it could be a blessing or a curse depending on what people do with that. And it's, it's funny. I remember being in uh, the Detroit lions uh, team meeting room and the NFL came in and said they, they were announcing, they, they framed it as a question, but it was really a statement um, how we would feel about having microphones on the sidelines and in the locker room before and after games, how we feel about being seen and the explanation was people see you as a role model. They want to know how you prepare. They want to know what you're talking about on the sidelines. They want that closer, more intimate view. And at first, every player had an uproar. You're not allowed to know. I don't want to no, know the NFL unless you pay me. I blah, blah, blah. And I raised my hand and I, I asked them, I said, guys, is this is this a business? Is this are we here as a overall group, understanding that we are in the midst of a billion dollar industry and everybody kind of understood it. And I said, if this is their attempt to grow that pie, to grow the salary cap, grow the business, and this is an avenue they see it, would you better support it if you could see a bigger pie in the salary cap and in the money that we make? And once you started to make those connections, people started to understand, oh, okay, so that is what it is ultimately leading to. Social media today is that behind the scenes look, is that opportunity. You no longer need CBS or Fox Sports to be able to share that. And so the idea that maybe a you know football player, maybe a women's soccer player, whomever, doesn't have hundreds of millions, but does have that impact and that voice to the 2,000 to 20,000 that are following them, that's a responsibility. And that is something that we need to start seeing as how can we utilize it for that bigger vision and for that bigger impact? It is a conversation that is being thrust upon youth, thrust upon younger and younger people. But I do see how we are starting to make those connections of you have now the chance that has never before been had in history to where I could be a 20-year-old or a 16-year-old and have a stage, and have an opportunity that comes with a lot of responsibility, but it is the moment that we're living in. Oh, for sure. And you're right that even if you don't agree with all the pieces of it, it's a conversation that's happening and should happen. Oh, we got it wrong. <laughs> let's let's yeah. and I we can talk about yeah, it as I'm like, somebody let's go who there is a little. supporting NILs here at Washington State University, right. not with the university, 
but supporting the athletes of the university. The NCAA crippled us. Uh, they, They saw a massive issue. They did everything they could to try to maintain their own identity and control of it. Once they realized it was not going to be, they walked away and they walked away and let everybody figure it out on their own. That is not a leader to begin with, but that is also not how you handle uh, an issue, a problem, let alone a revolution. And so we look at what happened in NILs. Do I like it as a former student athlete? No, because there needs to be guardrails. There needs to be some guidance. There needs to be some structure. And there wasn't and there still isn't. Do I like it in the idea that students are finally getting to tap into the billions of dollars of industry that they are helping create? I love that. I love it because I knew the guys who were sending some of their scholarship checks back home. I knew the guys who had medical injuries destroy their career and never got any kind of compensation for it. So I like that the pie is starting to be divided up and the players are getting a taste of it. I just don't like how it came to be. I don't like the messaging that it was uh, uh, attracted to to have. And I don't like the competition that some are trying to make between a university and the ones who want to support this initiative. I think that is a a misalignment and a short-sighted view that we are truly trying to support all parties involved in the in the athletic department and in the university perspective. Um, but no, as as it came out and it was kind of just shotgunned across the country and all of a sudden it was like, hey, college athletes are making you pay them money. That marketing was horrible. And really the rules and the structure that was provided at the start have not really been updated too much. But what was there at the beginning? was the Wild West. And we're never going to get that genie back in a bottle. Nobody's ever going to be able to cut this stream off. So this is the new landscape, and this is what we have to play with. Yeah, figure well, we have a choice moving forward on what we do with that, those circumstances. Yeah. Ah, I don't know if we have a, we don't have a choice to participate. We have a choice how we participate. Right. Yes. Yeah. And now, to me, the conversation is, so then why should someone come play for WSU? How do we really send that message loud and clear to the right athletes? So I think, you know, and, and this is uh, kind of playing to the audience a, a slight degree, but I look at it with the lens of Coops First at the forefront. Why? Because you should come to play for Washington State, not because of the four years. I know you're going to have a good time. Trust me, <laughs> you will have a good time. It's more for the time after. It it is sure. Can we get you some money and NIL opportunities? Yes. And if you actually have a name or a brand, even easier. But with the idea that you come here to join a, a fraternity, a sorority, you come here to join a gathering, a nation of people who truly at their core want to see you succeed. And whether that's the, you know, normal, traditional student applying or the student athlete applying. I really think as Washington State continues, we need to put more of our emphasis on the value of an athletic scholarship or the value of tuition in what happens beyond your days on the campus. I think every college is being forced to review that. You look at some of these tight-knit groups who always seem to help one another out, find a job, find a career, make connections, and do, do all of the things. We need to continue to think about this. This has been 10 years of the Cougs first mindset and mentality spreading across the nation. And I'm still baffled and amazed at how few people really understand what the operation is and how we are here to help support recent grads, support people in their careers, and truly just support Cougs along the way. So I look at that, and that is one of the first elements when I get to talk to a prospective student athlete Because if it's a prospective student athlete, you can't talk to them about NILs. I look at it and I say, think of what is going to be beyond your days on a campus. What community is going to be able to support you? Washington State has one and it has a strong one. Yeah. And organically it happens. So why not go through an organization like Cooks First who just organizes it a little bit better? (laughs) That's the way I look at it, right? Yeah. And yeah. Organize is a one of those skills that the vast majority of us need help with. So yes, yes, anybody who can help you organize and build a strategy, 
Oh, take it. What makes WSU great? Cougs support Cougs, and they are in every business and want to give you a good deal. Looking for a new bank or insurance? Think Cougs first. Selling your house? Think Cougs first. Need to plan a party? Pick a venue or set your menu? Think Cougs first. Did we make our point? Start to Google it at CougsFirst.org. And as always, go Cougs! So you finish up your time at WSU. What happens next? You said you didn't even think you had, you were fast enough. You had it in you, but obviously you did play. So how did that all come to be? I remember riding up in an elevator uh, in Bowler gym and a gentleman got off the elevator with me and asked for me to show him where Bill Doba, our head coach at the time's office was. And I said, I'd walk him over there. And as we got to his office, he shook my hand and he said, Hey, thanks, Jed. I appreciate you, your help. And for a moment, I kind of took a breath. I was like, never said my name. How does this guy know who I am? Turned out to be a scout for the San Diego Chargers. And that was truly the first moment the NFL really, and that was week five or six of my senior year. That was the first moment the NFL entered into my purview. I had been taking, you know, the GMAT, getting ready to go get my master's in accounting and follow the the CPA route. Um, but when the NFL opportunity came, it was one of those things that I talked about it with my family and specifically with my two older brothers. It was a dream. It was a dream world opening up. And they both said, reality is going to come calling soon. Chase the dream. Um, and so I did. I got to go and it was not easy. I got cut a dozen times. Baker's dozen, if you want to get particular. Um, again, those skills of being being told no. I experience on a weekly, daily basis as an entrepreneur now, and that skin that I needed to develop to survive in the NFL is something that has stuck with me, which is a a good thread. But I remember very vividly the moment in Cleveland where I got my first big paycheck. I'd been activated for two games. That check was coming in. And, you know, waking up that night and and kind of being in sweats and, and knots that I had no idea what to do with it. Not only that, I had spent most of that paycheck on an engagement ring for Kira, so all the money was gone. Um, And I just, I I sat and I stewed on the idea that I'm going to become the statistic. I'm going to become one of those guys who sure play a year or two in the NFL and have nothing to show for it. And so that was when my, my passion and my purpose changed. And it was an individual, you can call it a selfish mission. I set out to provide for myself. I needed to educate and become a lifelong learner. And financial literacy was one of those subjects I was absolutely in the dark about. Being a business degree, having an accounting uh, accounting degree, but looking at it and saying, this is something that if I was lost in, I knew the vast majority of the, the locker room was also lost in. What really humbled me is as I continue down this path and this journey, seeing that it wasn't a football problem. You know, we point to the big dumb jocks. That was not the issue here. It was an everybody problem. This was not a subject we t- we discussed, not a topic in high school or college that you prepared for. Things have taken steps. It is really neat to start to see states mandate financial literacy to graduate high school. Um, but that one simple check changed uh, my trajectory. And then I truly got to go and, and capitalize on the Coop's first mindset and started getting mentored by some coops. And why starting your own business? Obviously, there's probably some either easier routes you could have taken with the financial uh, literacy. We're both laughing for those who can't. Well, speak. honestly, yeah. I looked at it. I was uh, so I, I mentored by Brett Carolyn. Guy changed my life. Always love to give Brett, who's a, a, a coop alumni and football player. Went to work at a Cougar owned business at Brighton Jones, and I saw the path. I saw what being an advisor would look like. It's an amazing career. It's a much, much better income than uh, starting your own business. I'll say that. But I, I truly looked around the marketplace for financial literacy courses targeted at high school students. And there isn't a whole lot. There are some charities, there are some nonprofits. There's, you know, Dave Ramsey, who's been in the business for 30 years. Why I, I felt called to start Money Vehicle and launch out onto my own 
was because I saw a need. I saw a need in the the academic arena. How do you have a teacher teach something they don't know very much or anything about with money? I got my certification in financial planning. I'm a CFP, but I looked at it and I said, how do I take this expertise now and translate it to the beginner, translate it to the novice and really begin the, the basic steps of beginning a plan? And so I got to combine some of the skills, the money skills, the mindset skills, but really the social media and video skills that I, being a younger person, was inclined to start to test. Um, so I, I began Money Vehicle because I saw a massive need. I had an internal purpose and, and willingness to, to chase that passion. Um, and I believe in the impact. Ultimately, working with students, hundreds, thousands of students now, uh, seeing the impact that a message that is understood is translated into something that they can chew and digest, it can make a massive change. And that's kind of what we're out trying to do right now. How fulfilling, like what a cool um, purpose to push behind this like technical understanding that you built for yourself. I like to think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you measure those two two things, purpose and profit. Right. Uh, and as an entrepreneur, you have to daily measure them and realize, you know, it's going to it's going to be painful no matter which road you go down. Starting something is never easy. You're going to get 100 no's. I actually have a post-it note on my computer that says get 100 no's. Um, but to truly wake up and one of my morning mantras is to really tell myself, I'm chasing a passion and I'm confident in the vision. I have to remind myself that on a daily basis because at times as an entrepreneur, you're on an island and you feel very alone. So if you can truly continue to feel that warmth and get those chills around making an impact, this morning I got to talk to a teacher in Virginia, another teacher in Florida, and they were telling us and one of their students actually came and shared what the message they heard and how they're applying it that is that is everything and you know i look at a lot of you know avenues in my life i could walk down the idea that i get to truly believe i'm making an impact and and have a life's purpose that right now i'm weighing above a lot um and so it is it is one of these things that i'm very fortunate at the moment but it is definitely not without its uh, its own pain points. For sure. Thinking of all of your time with football, what you already said you're very accustomed to rejection, but what other lessons A Great loser. <laughs> fantastic. But what other takeaways lessons did you learn on the field that definitely apply to entrepreneurship and what you're doing now? Oh, um it's and it, this is a lesson I'm continuing to learn, and it, it applies in football. It applies in in money, but the breakdown is the example of checkers to chess. And checkers is a game. You know, you make one move at a time, primarily reaction based. Chess, you look at a board and you start to see a vision. You see several steps in advance, and you start to build a strategy and how to get your table to look like that. You have to adapt, you have to re, you know, see where the other opponent is going. But that idea of in the football world, I looked at you know high school football where we would run a play. It was a very simple play. And then in college, we'd run a counter of that simple play. And then we got to the NFL and we started really toying with people. You would have a guy aligned two yards outside of where he originally aligns or goes in motion or runs a route, all of that was just distraction. It was magic. It was how do you manipulate and maneuver somebody? But that is what strategy is. It is thinking three steps ahead, and it is saying, if I do this and this, this is what's going to happen, and then I can do that. That, as an entrepreneur, has been my biggest challenge because I am a run first and ask questions later kind of person. Having that ability to take some deep breaths sit and strategize where you're going to go. I began financial literacy and it's, hey, financial literacy is for everybody. I've delivered workshops for, you know, fifth graders. I've delivered workshops for 65-year-old cancer researchers. And you look at the depth and breadth of that and you say, it's, it's we're for everyone, which as a business, that's not a good strategy. A strategy for everyone is a strategy for no one. And so we had to really start to hyper-focus 
who are we going to go after? And that's been the last year to 18 months of hyper focusing on high schools. Um, again, there's 15 states that say to graduate high school, you have to go through a course that looks oddly similar to money vehicle. And we're proud to be able to support schools and specifically support teachers. Here in the state of Washington, in Oregon, in Idaho, we're working with schools as well who are proactively trying to address this massive need and this massive issue. Uh, but I would say that skill set of really identifying you can't move one to one, you can't move in reaction to what is happening. You got to think four or five steps ahead, play the game of chess. I love to compare that to the world of money. And the idea of budgeting is working one step at a time and kind of reacting to what's happening. I like cash management. Cash management is telling your money what to do before it's even there because you're thinking of ahead. Neither is wrong. People find success in both. But it is really framing that intentionality around playing a game of chess with your life. And now I get to do it with a game of my business. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, Jed, last serious question, which is, to any Coug listening to this episode of all the different chapters of life that you've lived, what's maybe one piece of advice you want to tell a younger version of you? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so I journal. I journal almost. I don't want to say every day, but I journal quite a bit. Um, what I would keep telling myself is keep writing things down. It is the most therapeutic mental health check you will ever imagine. I get to time travel now because I have journaled. I get to go back to my honeymoon with my wife. I get to go back to my my daughter's births. I get to go back to some of my days. I didn't journal about all my days in Pullman, but a couple of them made it in there. Some of them I'm glad I left out. What I would tell myself is, and this is probably, and this is not the question, but the greatest parenting advice, everything's a phase. Everything's a phase. You have life principles, you work on yourself, and you hope that some of who you really are translates through those phases. But everything in life is a phase, the good times, the hard times, all of it is going to come and it's going to go, you live in the moment, you live in the now. And if I can remind myself as an entrepreneur to stop trying to think about six months into the future, I can enjoy the impact that we're making today. Uh, and so I, I, again, this is, a, I guess, a little bit more than you wanted because now I'm giving myself therapy, but <laughs> it is an amazing feat. To, if, if I were to talk to younger people, journal, because it will help you become a leader. It will help you communicate your message, and it will help you write out the 1,001 emails you're going to write each week. But the idea that journaling reflects the phases of life, and it shows you where you've come and where you've grown I think that's one thing that I've enjoyed the most is looking at that younger version of me trying to figure so many things out and getting to kind of take the journey again with him. That's what a cool answer. I haven't got that one before. So thank you. Well, I try to keep people <laughs> guessing, you know, you got to be unique. Oh, for sure. And now we're ending with the ununique part because I ask every guest. Yes. President Kirk answered these questions too. So I ask everyone All these right. three questions. So Number one, Jed, if we were to get a drink in Pullman right now, where would we go? <laughs> drink in Pullman, right? Well, I got it. I mean, this is the, this is a cop out. It's not even good, but Bob's my dude. So it's got to be the coup. Yeah. Um, or, you know, go back old school and go to 425 campus and do it in the garage. <laughs> I mean, that's that was that was my jam. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'd go back. I'd go back to the house party. Love that. I wasn't okay. a bar guy. I got asked to leave a lot of bars. I don't know why. I don't know. We don't. Not in the journal. Legally, so we don't, we don't know. know why. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wasn't number... social media as much back then. Thank God. Just kidding. Totally yep. joking. Uh, number two, <laughs> of all the football games this season, what's one in it kind of, it, if it already happened, that's okay. Or if it's coming up, that's also fine. But one home game, that's a must see for you. I never want to relive Oregon. Um, so that one was awful, but beautiful in the same. Uh, you know, living in outside of Seattle, living in Bellevue, it's hard not to look at that Apple Cup every year and say, bring it, yeah. bring it. And if you have any 
understanding of the Seattle Times, they're going to win the national championship every year. Even when they're losing, they're still going to find a way to win it. So um, I love that they pushed it to Saturday. Give us Cougs a, a little bit of a breather to get over there. So but them dogs, man, we – Coach Leach was amazing. He won a lot of games. The emphasis or the lack of emphasis on that one hurt us as a as a nation. So circling that, I think Coach Dickert and staff realize we we passion ourselves on that one. So that's a that's I mean, that's not a unique I I'm gonna go with Idaho, those crosstown <laughs> rivals. That, that <laughs> Idaho game was a real tough one. Uh no, dogs. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you could describe your time at WSU in, what, in one word, what would it be? My time at WSU in one word would be um, fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I went there as a boy. I left as a man. And I was able to fulfill a lot of the the growth in in that journey, but also fulfill what I needed to take off into my first career in football and and really have set the foundations for what I was going to do in my life career, which is now financial literacy. So uh, my time in Pullman was absolutely fulfilling. And as all good kooks, anytime you get to go pierce that bubble of Pullman, it uh, you get that same feeling again. Yeah, so true. Jed, where can people find more of you and all the amazing things that you're up to now? Next time, can I get that last question beforehand? I would have liked to put more thought into it. <laughs> and that's a whole journal entry in and of itself. Yeah, um, I'll, so I'll make might... sure you can bring your journal with you and yes. scroll to the right oh, page right and read it word for fun. word. <laughs> uh, you can check us out at yourmoneyvehicle.com. If you know a high school teacher, principal, superintendent who is looking for financial literacy resources, we are a turnkey solution to this much needed topic. Working with schools nationwide, would love to work with more here in the Northwest. Um, I, I like Ohio and Florida, would like you know, Washington a little bit more. So we'd love for you to reach out. You can uh, email me at Jed, J-E-D, at yourmoneyvehicle.com. Again, aiming for high schools, wanting to help. Awesome. Thank you. And listeners, we'll have all that information in the show notes. Jed, thank you for your time today. That was amazing. Thank you. Okay, got to end it with a go Cougs. Yeah, go Cougs. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Cougs First podcast. We hope you leave feeling inspired, entertained, and encouraged to support yet another awesome Cougar-owned business. If you like what you heard, do us a huge favor and leave a review for the Cougs First podcast on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. And please share this podcast with your fellow Cougs. And remember to thank Cougs first for all of your products and services. But until the next episode, let's end it with a good old fashioned go Cougs.